Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Welcome and good evening, everybody. It's a regular town board meeting. It's April 2nd, 2018. Time is 7.01 p.m. Would you all please rise and join Councilman Anthony Menabier in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Uh, all right, again, thank you and welcome. Uh, the first item on the tonight's agenda is we need to enter into the Board of Health for three resolutions that set public hearings, and we'll get into the details after we go into the Board of Health. Is there a motion to move into the Board of Health? So moved. Moved by Councilman Farron. Seconded. Seconded by Ca Councilwoman Atherton. Um, all those in favor of moving into the Board of Health, say aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We're now into the Board of Health. First resolution, Karen, please. Sure. The first one is setting a public hearing on a sewage disposal variance application of John Ellis. Okay. Uh, Resolution, public hearing, John Ellis wants to put in holding tanks, two 15,000 gallon, resides at 56 Sunnyside North. Um, the variance is that requesting for the holding tanks, six foot from the building in lieu of the required 10 foot setback, 13 foot from the existing well in lieu of the 50 foot setback, 45 feet from the well on the west side in lieu of the required 50 foot setback. And that's to set the public hearing for April 16th. Do I have a motion to set the public hearing for this uh, sewage disposal variance application? I move it. Moved by Councilman Metabier. I second. Seconded by Councilman Perron. Roll call vote on this, please, Karen. Sure. Councilperson Atherton? Yes. Perron? Yes. Switzer? Yes. Stroud? Yeah. Metabier? Yeah. Motion passes unanimously. Second resolution before us as, as the Board of Health tonight is, Karen. Okay, setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Lee and Chris Kruger. Lee and Chris Kruger live at 6 Morton Road. Um, they would like to replace their wastewater treatment system and they need the variances to do so. One, an absorption field to be 83 feet from the lake instead of the required 100 foot setback. Two, absorption the field to be 95 feet from the neighboring well instead of the required 100 foot setback. Three, absorption the field to be seven foot from the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback. And four, wastewater tank to be eight foot from the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback. And fifth and last variance being requested, the wastewater tank to be four feet from the dwelling instead of the required 10 foot setback. And this public hearing, if this resolution passes tonight, will be set for April 16th. Okay, motion to approve setting the public hearing for this uh, disposal of variance application. So moved. Moved by Councilman Farrell. Second. Seconded uh, by Councilwoman Switzer. 
A roll call vote on this, please, Karen. Councilperson Perone? Yes. Switzer? Yes. Stroud? Yes. Medivere? Yes. Etherton? Yes. All right, unanimous. It's set for April 16th, public hearing for Lee and Chris Kruger's uh, sewage disposal variance application. Third resolution before the uh, Board of Health, please, Karen. We're setting public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Tom and Terry Kubricki. Okay. This is what we dealt with a couple weeks ago. Tom and Kubricki had put in a um, sewage disposal variance application. Uh, we asked him to consider holding tanks, and he said he would. So this is a new application. So I'm going to close the public hearing on his previous application, and I'll reopen a public hearing if this resolution passes on April 16th. So this is a, a, for 89 Pilot Navro, and it's to put in holding tanks, three holding tanks with capacity of 1,000 gallons each, for the required total of 3,000 gallons, and the variance is being requested seven foot 10 inches from holding tank one to the westerly side property line in lieu of the required 10 foot setback, and five foot three inches from holding tank number one to the structure on the westerly side in lieu of the required 10 foot setback, and eight foot five inches from holding tank number two to the westerly side proper line in lieu of the required 10 foot setback, and the fourth variance, four foot 10 inches from holding tank number three to the easterly side property line in lieu of the required 10 foot setback. And again, if this resolution passes, this will set the public hearing on this sewage disposal variance application for April 16th. Is there a motion to approve setting the public hearing on the sewage disposal variance application for April 16th? Supervisor, I have a critical comment to make, which is I think in the second whereas, the first um, clause after whereas ends with a holding tank, and I think we should say a holding tank system. Okay. So noted. We we'll just knock out the A. Uh, you could, well, or you could, you could say holding tanks, plural, or what we've been calling it is a holding tank system. So I'm suggesting adding the word system after a holding tank, add the word system. Okay, because I do see a holding tank system down below. Precisely. And we just add system after tank, the first tank, not the second tank. Exactly so. All right. Uh, resolution is amended, and there is a... Uh, a resolution to move this forward. So moved. All right, Councilman Perone. I'll second it by uh, Councilman Medivier. Roll call vote on this, please. Your Councilperson Switzer? Yes. Straub? Yes. Medivier? Yes. Etherton? Yes. Perone? Yes. Okay. That's it for the Board of Health. Motion to move out of the Board of Health? So moved. Moved by uh, Councilwoman Atherton? I'll second it. Seconded by uh, Councilman uh, Metterbeer. All those in favor of moving out of the Board of Health say aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We're out of the Board of Health. Next on the uh, agenda, we have before us nine resolutions. I will go through and briefly describe each resolution. There's an agenda up here on the table for anybody wishing to uh, have a copy of uh, what the resolutions are about uh, with them. You're welcome to come up and get one. And then I will give the public um, an opportunity to speak to any of the resolutions before us tonight. Now, if you have another town matter that you would like to speak to the board about, I do give you the opportunity to do that towards the end of the, period, the, the meeting tonight. This portion of the meeting is just to the resolutions. So, resolution 3-1. Resolution Aaron. adopting amended e-waste fee schedule for electronic recycling services? Okay. We rebid and we uh, we got the last, uh, we, the recycling service that handles our e-waste is the same as we had before electronic recycling services. Their rates are up a little bit, so we had to reset the schedule. So turning in e-waste, one to 20 pounds would be $5. 21 to 40 pounds would be $10. 41 to 65 pounds would be $15. 65 to 100 pounds would be $20. 101 to 125 will be 30. And anything up above 125 will be 40. 
We're even charging for other electronic waste. There'll be a small fee for anything up to 10 pounds for $2 and anything over 10 pounds, $4. So that's a rate schedule we're going to try and see if it works. We do not try and make money on this. We try and break even. Same thing with our, both of our transfer stations, the so one located at Luzerne Road and one located at Ridgeville, which was try and break even. So we'll try this new schedule, given the new fees we're being charged, and see if it breaks even. That's Resolution 3-1. Resolution 3-2. Resolution reappointing Ronald Kuehl as member of Queensbury Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, Ron Kuehl is a great guy. He's uh, had a lot of service, has a lot of uh, thought and input. We very much would like to... Uh, reappoint him, I believe. Uh, this is a real resolution to do so. Resolution 3-3. Resolution authorizing an agreement between Town of Queensbury and Glens Falls Collaborative. All right. Well, as you know, Glens Falls and Queensbury uh, do a lot of shared services, do a lot of partnership arrangements and everything else. And um, and this is to be a partner with the Glens Falls Co Co Collaborative for $1,500, which includes um, participation of many Queensbury businesses with the Chicken Wing Fest and uh, with the Take a Bite and uh, Pet Fest and uh, Grandma's uh, Table and the Fit Fest and Boo to You and Hometown Holidays and many other things and uh, they have a website plus they have flyers and Queensbury is included in all this and again it's just to rejoin a partnership that we've enjoyed with them for many years now. And the Wing Fest is one I really look forward to. It's Saturday, April 28th, noon to 3. And so um, that's packed, and, and it's a good time. It's fun to be there. All right, so that's Resolution 3.3. Let me snap this together. Resolution 3-4. Resolution authorizing contract with Council for Prevention Inc. for provision of the Warren County Youth Court Program. All right. Years and years and years, we donate 6000 to the Youth Court. And we actually get some grant money back. Uh, but Youth Court is just what it sounds. It, it's an opportunity, rather than go through to the adult court system, and uh, nothing good happens there. This is for the younger people, and it's first-time offenders. And um, the court, the judge, everything is is the youth, uh, and they're overseeing their other youths. So um, referrals go to the youth court from the probation department. Most crimes are small crimes or violations. Um, so it's for first-time offenders and combines accountability with positive youth development. Youth court accepts youthful and juvenile offenders between the ages of 10 and 18 that have been charged with, like I said, small violations or crimes. Youth court director sets up an initial intake evaluation with the offender and the parents uh, or guardians at the Council for Prevention or the Warren County Probation Department to assess the risk level of the offender and to determine the degree to which the individual is involved in the illegal substances or sometimes it's theft. And then the next step is for the offender to appear at the youth court proceedings where he or she will be judged by a court of their peers. Youth court is held Thursday evenings from 6 to 8 at the Warren County Municipal Center. On the fourth Thursday of, uh, of the month, court is held at the Warrensburg County Court. And it goes on and on, it describes the whole program, and it's a great program, and uh, recidivism is very low with young people that go through this, and I think they're very thankful they were allowed to go through the youth court system rather than the adult court, and I want to thank Catherine Chambers, who was the youth court director. She does an excellent job at organizing all this, and it's uh, not an easy task. So thank you, Catherine. That's 3.4, 3.5. Resolution approving year 2017 service award program records for Queensbury Volunteer Fire Companies. All right. Our firefighters and our EMS squad, but this deals with firefighters. We have like a, a, a retirement program for them that if they put in a certain amount of training and respond to a certain number of emergencies and learn how to operate certain equipment. They get points for all that. 
if they get 50 or more points, that will give them one year of, uh, of uh, being, um, and they need five year minimum, but it will give them one year of investment into a retirement program that will give them the equivalent, I think, of about $700 a year. Resolution 3.6. Resolution authorizing the adoption of amended town of Queensbury workplace violence prevention program and workplace violence prevention policy statement. All right, well, the town uh, did do a workplace violence prevention program in 2009, and we did, regardless of what was reported, uh, involve the union in the original program. So the town as the resolution says, has long recognized the value of its employees, and we do seek a safe work environment for each and every town employee, and we wish to minimize the risk of workplace violence. So uh, in 2010, after working with the union, we did put in a, uh, and authorize the adoption of a workplace violence prevention program, and then the Department of Labor asked us to update it. So even in our update, we involved the union and the workforce. So the town, which included an authorized employee representative from the town's unit of the Civil Service Employees Association, reevaluated re re its workplace, including all work sites where the town employees perform work-related duties in the course of their employment. And whereas the authorized employee representative from the town's unit of the Civil Service Employees Association has reviewed and provided input regarding the content of the amendment of the Town of Queensbury Workplace Violence Prevention Program, the town board wishes to authorize such proposed amended program and policy statement as presented in this meeting. And the adoption of the amended Town of Queensbury Workplace Violence Prevention Policy Statement and Workplace Violence Prevention Program substantially in the form presented in this meeting and authorizes and directs the town supervisor to make the arrangements for the distribution of copies to all town employees, including members of the town's unit of the Civil Service Employees Association. So, um, and we're also going to give this to the appropriate representatives of the New York State Department of Labor and the town safety officer, town council, town supervisor's office, town budget officer, and to take any action which is appropriate. So, um, you know, the town works very hard, and we're not stopping. We're going to continue working very hard to make the town of Queensbury and the employment atmosphere a safe atmosphere for all our employees. I mean, just to give you an example, um, we, had, no, we now have uh, security systems set up in, in our main office complex here. We have uh, controlled access to the buildings. There's cameras, security cameras. There's alarm system um, and much more. Um, incurring losses. So has our safety program for our employees been successful? Well, in 2013, just before I came in, the incurred losses was $753,525. $753,000. All right. In 2017, it was $24,000. Okay? Uh, New York State as an experienced modifier factor. When I came into office, it was 1.5. We were put into what's called a code 59. Our uh, workman comp rates soared high. We were above a 1.50. A one is average. A one and a half, again, is 50% above that. We are down to a 1.09, okay? from 2015 to 2018. Uh, number of claims. 2010s, we were averaging uh, 10 claims a year. In uh, 2016, we had two. And in 2017, for the first nine months, is what we have, we had four. So a significant reduction in lost time claims. Um, and so forth. 
the statistics all point to we're working very hard to make this a safe environment and to try and prevent workplace violence. More on that later, probably. 3.7. Resolution expung expunging past due water and sewer charges for parcel located at 275 Bay Road. All right, uh, this is a parcel that is on Bay Road that most of you are familiar with. We call it the Mullen Building. It's next to a bear. It's on Bay Road, 275 Bay Road. It uh, is dilapidated. Nobody wants to touch it. The county took it over for the purpose of doing an environmental review. They did phase one. It didn't turn up anything significant. So they're gonna do phase two. We cross our fingers, nothing significant. And then if there's no significant environmental negative impacts, that take expensive remediation, the county may take it over for lack of paying taxes. And then it'll be put on the auction block and maybe we can make this productive. Now, in the meantime, they're exempt from paying taxes. So, uh, but, you know, the county was being charged taxes and they said, no, 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 for 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, no. So this is a resolution authorizing the town assessor to expurge past due Queensbury Consolidated Sanitary Sewer and Queensbury Water District charges from this property. Resolution 3.8. Resolution regarding extension of probation period and acknowledging Michael Brunel's return to labor position in Town Highway Department. All right, that's pretty much self-explanatory. 3.9. Resolution approving audit of bills for of April 3rd, 2018. Okay, resolved that the uh, Queensbury Town Board hereby approves the warrant with a run date of March 29th, 2018, and a payment date of April 3rd, 2018, totaling $972,249.05. Those can't be paid until this board approves them. Those are the nine resolutions before us tonight. Anybody like to speak to any of those? Yes, ma'am. Susan Sheehan, President, Unit 9007 CSEA, representing the employees of the Town of Queensbury. I was invited by Mike Palmer to um, begin again the workplace violence initiative that began after Priya Desai visited back in July. And we did uh, visit every physical location of the town. Um, the only building in the town that has all of the security aspects that you spoke to is the one we're sitting in now. And the number of union employees in this building is significantly less than the highway department or the water department, cemetery, solid waste. Um, every employee matters, however, I get that. Um, we did uncover things that needed to be addressed and we did put it in the policy. I'm hoping that's part of what's getting passed here tonight. I'm really not sure, there's a lot of double speak. There may have been, um, in your mind, a policy passed in 2010, but if anyone reads the law, and I would encourage you to read the law as it's written, there was no employee participation. There may have been the request for a signature to sign off. It's a completely different thing. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to have any of the nine resolutions before the town board tonight? Seeing none, uh, Town Council Paltrowitz, would you speak to um, a little bit to um, elaborate and educate the public on where we are with this workplace uh, violence prevention program? Thank you. Larry Paltrowitz, um, the Labor Council to the Town. Um, and as Supervisor Strau indicated, that um, back in 2000, nine and 10, the town participated in uh, the required uh, evaluation under 27B of the New York Labor Law to prepare a workplace violence prevention policy statement and program. And not getting into a debate with Ms. Sheehan, but that uh, there is documentation within the town to indicate that uh, the authorized employee representative from CSCA was given an opportunity to participate uh, at that time. But having said that, we all know that the 
uh, Department of Labor came through uh, this summer and indicated that there were some deficiencies that they wanted the town to redo its uh, workplace violence prevention program and policy statement. At that time, the town hired a consultant, Joe Cook, who was formerly an employee of the Department of Labor, to consult with the town to prepare uh, the document. And it's my understanding that um, the town followed all of Mr. Cook's recommendation and came up with the uh, package that uh, was presented uh, back in January of 2018. However, it came to light uh, through the Department of Labor that an authorized employee representative was not, uh, did not participate in the assessments that took place for this amended program and policy statement. And so what happens is, is that uh, in January, January 24th, I believe, that the authorized employee representative was provided a copy of all the documents. And then um, site visits, as Ms. Sheehan indicated, did occur on March 12th and March 14th of this year. Uh, Ms. Sheehan and CSEA did provide suggested changes to the documents on March 26th. And so some of her suggestions and CSEA suggestions were incorporated into the document, but not all. And so at this point, the a resolution you have before you is to adopt the amended uh, workplace violence prevention program and policy statement after the authorized employee representative not only had an opportunity to participate, but actually did participate. And then once it's adopted, assuming that it is adopted, there'll be training that will be done for all the employees. Once that occurs, and hopefully that will occur very soon after this evening, um, then the town um, I'm representing the town uh, before the Department of Labor to first of all indicate that we believe the documentation supports that the town was in compliance with uh, Section 27B of the Labor Law. At that time, the then Labor Council to the uh, town participated in the development of that program. Um, and then we're also going to indicate to the Department of Labor that uh, in accordance with its requirements of this summer, that the town did go through a reassessment involving the authorized employee representative to come up with the document that you have this evening. The policy statement is Appendix A to the program. The program itself is the multiple page document, and then there are appendices. One of the things uh, that is appended is Appendix C, and that is the document that does describe what the risk assessments summary were and what the town's actions were going to be. And having some discussion with Supervisor Strau that this is going to be an ongoing evaluation by the town. They're gonna to continue, my understanding is that you want to continue to take a look at that Appendix C to see if in fact we can uh, work on it. And again, we will involve the authorized employee representative if there's going to be any modification to Appendix C. Um, I have been in communication with um, uh, the CSCA uh, labor relations specialist, Tammy Williams, and actually uh, uh, did provide uh, Ms. Williams uh, and Ms. Sheehan recently with the documents that uh, you're gonna be uh, reviewing this evening. So I just wanted to give you a thumbnail sketch of what's been transpiring over the last several weeks. And we're hopeful that the Department of Labor, once they receive the information from the town, will either determine that um, there should not be any violation and if there is, that any penalty should be mitigated uh, as a result of the conduct that the town engaged in back in 2009-10, as well as 2018. So I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, yeah, questions? Yes, I have a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pautowicz. <clears throat> yes, I have a question. And since this was, this is about the resolution that's coming up, and since you decided to go ahead and not allow us to speak until, you know. No, I asked if anybody wanted to speak to any of the residents. Right, but you hadn't, you know, this fellow hadn't gotten but up Mr. here White to tell us the story yet. currently out of order. This fellow had not he gotten had not up. been recognized to come this up. Is, to is about, this is about this resolution. Yeah. And he did what he did best, and that's to misdirect. Yeah, well, in your opinion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any resolutions that the town board would like to have pulled separately for roll call? 
Seeing none, uh, is there a motion to move uh, to approve resolution 31 through 39? I'll introduce. Introduced by Councilman Metabier. Second. Seconded by Councilman Atherton. Roll call vote on resolution 31 through 3.9. Councilperson Metabier? Yes. Atherton? Yes. Brown? Yes. Switzer? Yes. Strap? Yes. Any correspondence? I do have one. It's a supervisor's monthly report from community Devel development and building codes for the month of March, which is on file in the town for itself. Okay, thank you. All right, now we have privilege of the floor. Thank you. Yes, sir. And you can speak to any town issue. Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Please. My name is, good evening. My name is Joe Fusco. I live at 67 Cedar Court, Queensbury. I am the president of the Senior Court Homeowners Association. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this infrastructure issue to the entire town board. I will try to stay within the four minute time allotment. In the interest of full disclosure, Cedar Court HOA has been trying to get this issue resolved for the past two years. We apologize for taking your time this evening but we don't know where else to go. So what is the issue? Simply put, <clears throat> the entrance road to our community was not properly built by the developer. Now, how can I make this statement? I'm not a civil engineer. I am, and I do have common sense. And this is what this issue is about, common sense. The entrance road, let me kind of draw a picture for you now. The entrance road to our development, which is right up the street here, about 100 yards, pitches two different ways. The first 300 feet of roadway pitches toward Bay Road. From that point on, from the 300 uh, foot point on to the western edge of the development, which is about 300 yards away, and has an elevation drop of five to six feet. Now, I didn't put a section on it, but I'm estimating that the drop is about five to six feet down. That's quite a drop of relatively short distance. All well and good if there were catch basins to catch the, the runoff. Well, there are catch basins down there. However, there are, the catch basins are on residents' lawns and in residents' driveways. Now, what developer would make this sort of mistake when they're building a road? And why would the town inspectors accept this roadway? Now, granted, this was 21 years ago, but aren't current town officials obligated to correct this? Now, picture this. Several days of rain and one, or one day of a downpour with snow melt thrown in. Now, where does all this water go? The crown in the road throws it to the side shoulder where it erodes the shoulder and due to the severe elevation drop, deposits all of that water and sediment at the lower end of our development. No catch basins in the roadway to catch this runoff. So the problem is twofold. First, we need to prevent the erosion of the shoulder through adequate drainage with some type of black top swale or curbing similar to what is provided at Surrey Fields. This will handle the water and the erosion of the soil. We are seeing signs where without a shoulder to support the edge of the road, the road itself is starting to crack and break away. Inadequate drainage is a major factor in pavement failure. Secondly, we need to provide effective catch basins in the roadway, not in the driveways and not in, on lawns, so that the uh, eroding, uh, the, sh the water would be safely drawn away. You would need to see this firsthand to have a better understanding to that end, and I would like to invite the entire town board as a group or as individuals to come to Cedar Court, where I will walk with you so that you can see and judge for yourself. Now, both Mr. Strau and Mr. Medivere have been to Cedar Court, and I appreciate their, attend their attendance and their attention to this. They saw firsthand what this involves. 
but it's been going on for two years and nothing has been done. And what I'm here for tonight is what are, what are our options? What are we to do as a homeowner association to get this problem corrected? Joe, thank you. We did address this through email yep. and, um, and I did uh, ask the highway department to not forget about doing this. And I will follow up on that and get back to you, Joe. I appreciate it, John. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. While I'm here, just one further issue is that they put an enormous amount of sand down on our road this winter, and the sweeper has been through once. And we would really appreciate it if he could come through again because they picked up about 30% of what was there, and it's just loaded with sand and dirt on the on the road. I'll look into it and get back to you. Joe. Thank you. Yep. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yes, what Mr. Strau and Mr. Paltrowitz did not say uh, was that uh, you passed a resolution in January, and in that resolution was a statement that there was uh, participation by the authorized employee representative. And in fact, if you had filed this, you would have uh, possibly been found guilty of filing a false instrument, uh, a felony uh, offense. Uh, if intent is proven, otherwise a misdemeanor. So um, I think that you should be questioning why you had to pass the same resolution twice now uh, this year, uh, if, there, if everything was on the up and up as, as, uh, as suggested. Uh, my other question, and I, and I thank you for responding to the last gentleman, I hope you'll respond here, is um, I'd like to know um, I, uh, where that Nissan Leaf is now that you bought yeah I'd like to know that yeah you're real good at uh, not moving your lips but the um, I'm going to give you your time yeah oh sure so um, what I had asked you know a month ago that to be delayed until we could put it on that fifty thousand uh, uh, dollar amount that we were getting that we knew we were getting at that point in time well, we're putting together the proposals now, and if it had not been purchased at that time, it could have been part of this $50,000. That would have been um, a, a good way to have saved um, a, a purchase. Um, but no, it, it was purchased at that time, and it apparently has not been delivered because I haven't heard uh, of it showing up. Um, you know, that $26,000 uh, could have covered the fines that you're going to end up paying to the Labor Department when this is all over. Okay, there's, you can have the balance of my time, by the way. Thank you. The leaf has been ordered and is on its way. The uh, dealer said that it could take as much as a month to get it, and that was a couple of weeks ago, so maybe it could take another two weeks before we get the leaf. Anybody else like to speak to the town board? Yes, ma'am. Dorothy Selmeyer, 71 Cedar Court. I'm also part of the Cedar Court Homeowners Association. And in addition to the issue with drainage that Joe brought up, um, I'd also like to emphasize the terrible problem we had with the sand in our neighborhood this week, this winter rather. Um, we had enough sand in our neighborhood for about four neighborhoods. And they did come through Good Friday and picked up some of it, but there's an awful lot left. Um, and it's even if I want to go out and walk in the neighborhood now, a car comes by and then you're walking in a dust bowl. Um, it's, and it's very unsightly also. Um, and I just, if you could do something about it, I'd love it. Yes, as Thank I told Joe, I will call Highway Department and see if they can get the sweeper back there again. Uh, anybody else? Seeing none. Town board discussions. Jennifer? Sure, I just have a, a, Thank you. a couple of items. Um, the first, I just want to alert anyone in the IT community that there is an IT job fair on April 11th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Adirondack Hall at SUNY Adirondack. Um, this event is to connect employers with students, alumni, and community residents seeking local opportunities in the IT industry. Um, just to make those Again, in the community that aren't aware that Family Services um, of Glens Falls is actually a regional support system 
um, family services as services and program support programs are for Warren Washington northern Saratoga counties it's an excellent resource for those who might need problems with infants uh, special needs emergency dental care there's a food pantry screening provision and hearing feet first program um, emergency prescription program and lastly um, the rec department those who haven't visited the our website we have um, an incredible Parks and Rec Department, you can go ahead online and you can also sign up to get updates to the programs. Um, they'll actually email them to you as, as those take place. And that's all I have. Oh, thank you. And there's lots of pickleball courts <laughs> um, at Jenkinsville Park, I know that. The nets are up. And all the nets are up. Um, just one thing, the Tri-County New York Transition, uh, we're in collaboration with the Crandall Library and we do a film series called In the Public Interest. And the film this Wednesday, a little late for um, Women's History Month, which was actually March, but this is history and it, um, it reflects what was going on between 1966 and 1971 in the, in, in the women's movement. That's at 6.30, excellent film. Um, at 6.30 at the library, community room. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Tony? I'm good tonight, thanks, Tom. All right. Well, I can't say I'm good until I get done. Uh, no, I have a few things. Um, again, first of all, I would like to thank our Clean Energy Community Advisory Committee, which includes Kathy Bazzoni as the chair, Lisa Adamson, Catherine Atherden, John and Kathy Braco, Diane Collins, Steve Dana, Steve Deeb, Tony Gravitsky, Lionel Lemery, Bernice Menace, Harvey Norgy, Emma Reed, Steve Traver, Travis Whitehead. Because we earned, and they helped us earn, our Clean Energy Community designation from NYSERDA, and that entitles us to go for a $50,000 grant, which we can use for lighting and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, we're, I don't think we're gonna have any problems spending the $50,000 grant on environmentally positive things. So uh, um, in order to earn this clean energy community designation, we had to complete at least four high impact clean energy actions. So we streamlined the local approval process. We adopted a benchmarking policy. We completed energy code enforcement training. We installed an electric vehicle charging station. We completed four. We're working on Solarize. We may work on others. Uh, the committee uh, has to help the town board or advise them in what ways they think that we could most effectively spend $50,000 to produce other energy savings for the town. So we're looking forward to that. And so we're, this town board has been unanimous and strong in its support of this effort. But again, I want to thank the Clean Energy uh, Community Advisory Committee for all their hard work. <clears throat> Big Brothers Big Sisters sent us uh, the town, people of the town, a thank you. We gave them a donation of $2,000 in support of their Big Brothers Big Sisters. And as we all know, what a great organization that is. So we're glad to help them in doing the fine things they're doing for our community. Um, May 5th, there is going to be a tire recycling day. It's going to be at the Warren County DPW up in Warrensburg. First come, first serve, no businesses. There will be a slight charge of $2 per tire, limit 10 tires per household. Um, New York State um, requires that all dogs four months of age or older that reside in the state for more than 30 days must be licensed. And they must be licensed within the municipality in which they currently live. And they have to renew that license on an annual basis. Uh, when you come to renew your dog, make sure you have a proof of rabies vaccination. 
and if applicable, a neutering or spraying certificate to the Queensbury Town Clerk's Office where you will complete an application and pay a small fee. A tag will be issued which, along with the rabies tag, must be worn on your dog's collar at all times. Okay, here are the charges. Spray neutering fee schedule, $6. Non-sprayed, non-neutering, $13. Senior discount, sprayed neutered, only $2. Sprayed non-neutered, $7. If you have any questions, contact the town uh, clerk's office at 761-8234. That's area code 518. Okay. Um, there's been uh, some discussion on purchasing, so I asked the law and the accounting office, can we trade in a vehicle? And yes, you can. That's legal. Uh, backhoe. Ron Ball, in the last meeting, said that I called the backhoe a piece of junk, and I did it three times. Well, I have the verbatim of two meetings where we talked about the backhoe. I never called it a piece of junk, not even once. But I'll give you a highlight of what was said. Let's start with January 25th. Ron Ball. Even if that thing wasn't running, it's worth 25000 He's referring to the backhoe that we were going to trade in for 15000 Councilman Brewer, Ron, why do you say it's worth 25000 Mr. Ball, it used, that's what they go for. Mr. Ball, I believe the thing is worth 25000 maybe thirty. Councilman Brewer, well, maybe we can table this. Councilman Clements, yeah, that might be a good idea. We could maybe, uh, there could be a $10,000 difference here, you know, or more. Councilman Brewer, it's possible. See if we can sell it to Ron Ball for $25,000. Mr. Ball, I might buy it. Mr. Ball, I might be at $16,000. That's $1,000 more already. Okay, and then Mr. Brewer says, well, we could allow him to buy it. We got a, and then Supervisor Stroud, I said, this is what I said, the backhoe, I'm trying to tell Mr. Ball, has really gotten a lot of work and abuse. It's for the highway department, keep that in mind. They use their equipment every day a lot. That's what I said. I didn't call it a piece of junk. Mr. Ball sat up here and said, I called it a piece of junk three times. I never called it a piece of junk. That's as bad as it gets. Councilman Brewer, uh, Ron just offered us 16000 Mr. Ball, I'll pay it. Mr. Ball, the tires cost 10000 just the tires alone. All right, that was September 25th. October 2nd. Again, the topic came up again. Me, I'm speaking. Tom Benes, our highway superintendent, worked out a deal to get a trade-in for our 1999 Fermac backhoe and get $15,000 trade-in for the new backhoe. The 2018 John Deere 410L backhoe loader, which has a price of $112,370. We would get $15,000 trade-in, making it a net purchase price of $97,370. There was some concern that the backhoe might be worth more than 15000 After looking at it, we ascertained that it didn't appear to be worth more than 15000 It appeared after discussions and investigation that 15000 was a fair deal. Ron Ball, last meeting of last week, I made an offer of $16,000 for that piece of junk that you call a backhoe. My offer still stands, so if you are really conservative, you will take my offer. I think the tractor is worth 20000 I don't want a lot of people to know about it because I really would like to get it for 16000 That's where I stand on that. And I could go on, but Councilman Brewer asked if he'd give 18 He said no. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I wanted to set the record straight. 
I can make this available to you. This is the verbatim text of the two be meetings when we talk to about the background, okay? People say I say some things and I don't. Okay. Now, supervisor report to town committee. It'll be quick. All right, March 20th, Tuesday, following the March 19th town board meeting, I had an EDC annual regular and a regular meeting. I met with Solid Waste Superintendent Rich Paris, where we discussed the e-waste uh, service and fee schedule that we just passed tonight. Uh, Laserfish people met, and some of the town board members were at that. So Laserfish and the upgrades to Laserfish will reduce paper, help us to work smarter, digital, help us to digitalize the content. We'll be able to better manage these documents. It'll provide us better organization, improved access, boost productivity. I mean, we do a lot of things on this town board, and this town board knows how much work is involved in running this town now. We don't get much credit for all the things we do, but I want to give you guys credit for all the things you do. Wednesday, March 21st, I had um, uh, LGA meeting, met with Kathy Bazzoni, a CEC advisory committee meeting, and then uh, Warren County Historical Society where they talked about local women suffrage leaders. March 22nd, Thursday, um, uh, there was a Lake Shore Chamber of Commerce and a CBB meeting uh, with Kristen Hannapin providing uh, the leadership there, and she's doing a lot of positive things for our area and bringing in new events. Um, discussed with a local developer a new proposal that you'll probably find about very soon going up on the million dollar half mile. Um, I'm, and then I um, had a SUNY Adirondack Board of Trustees meeting. March 23rd, Friday, we had a pathway quarter meeting. I was at the doctor's, Kathy attended that. And I don't know, is there anything new you want to share with what? Let me think. <laughs> well, anyhow, I'll get back to you if you do think of something. All right, I met with Mark Shearer, and he has a proposal to expand the Golden Goal Sports Park, and we'd like some help with that. So he's going to come and talk to the board. Um, then I met with Tom Kubricki, and I said, Tom, you've got to do a site visit and have some of the town board members come up and see your situation, which we did. Uh, March 24th, Saturday, uh, Councilwoman Catherine Atherton and I uh, gave speeches. It was part of the Warren County Historical Society's introduction to a multi-school debate on women's suffrage. And suffragette Alice Paul portrayed Sandra Weber, a local suffragette. And I'd like to thank the students from Skylar Bill, Queensbury, Warrensburg. They did a wonderful you job. It's very interesting to see them. And I was glad to see the pro ERA amendment debaters won. Yeah, they really didn't have a good way to stand on them. Both sides <laughs> did a good job. Yeah, the other side didn't have much to work with. And then I did a Bay Ridge Rescue Squad's annual banquet. Sunday, March 25th, I did the Shamrock Shuffle and the Thurman Maple Day. Uh, March 26th, Monday, Economic Growth Committee, Legislative and Rules Committee. Uh, I did a Lake George Partnership Advisory Committee meeting, and that night we had a town board workshop where we um, had to adopt a resolution uh, that uh, gives the Clean Energy Communities Committee uh, the go-ahead to go and do what they're going to do for the solar ice program. It also accepts the $5,000 that NYSERD is willing to give the committee for the solar ice program and um, accepts our participation in the application for the $50,000 grant now that we're a designated community. On March 27th, Tuesday, we did our site visit up on 89 Pilot Knob Road. And then I went to Chapman Museum where they did a presentation, Tim Widener did a presentation of the history of the Glenswell's water system, which includes Queensbury. It's Queensbury's history too. March 28th, Wednesday, a discussion on grant resolution procedures, just so everyone's on the same board. How do you properly go through if you're going to apply for a grant? You have to have this board's approval and so forth. Uh, Moody's rating call. Uh, we are a double A2, which is a very good rating for a municipality. Uh, they wanted to know about this and that and the other thing. We talked about fund balances. We talked about revenue streams. They were... Um, 
they, they think we are a very uh, fiscally healthy town, but not willing to raise our uh, rating higher than a double A2, which a double A2 is good. Uh, but again, uh, they thought our fund balances could be a little bit bigger. They were a little bit nervous about a revenue stream coming from the tourism retail world. And, uh, you know, and I had talked to them about we need to diversify and attract other industries to the area. And we need to do things like put sewers in and extend the airport runway to be able to do that. So they liked that discussion and they liked the conservative approach that the town was taking. Uh, then I had a Warren County Safe and Quality Bicycle Organization meeting that I chaired March 29th, Thursday. We did a tour of the new county court facility. It's really coming along nicely. Had a finance committee meeting. And then I did a talk at the Glens Falls Rotary luncheon. March 30th, Friday, I met with Spencer Montgomery, and he's talking about some development ideas that he has up there in West Mountain. And then I met with Frank Miller, and he would like to progress his development of the lacrosse, youth lacrosse program. And so he would like to talk to the board about that too. Uh, Saturday, I uh, was here working at the town. Sunday was Easter, and today's town board meeting. And that's it for me. Anything else? Anybody else wants to add anything? All right, we are progressing forward on the uh, pathway order study which is the study of Route 9, the traffic impacts, and what else might get in the way of economic development in that Route 9 corridor from 149 down to Sweet Road. So we're making progress there. So if there's nothing else for the good of the order, then I would like to thank Look TV and Joel Barlow, uh, Town Council Mark Shackner, and Deputy Town Clerk Karen O'Brien, Town Board and the public for coming tonight. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, our sponsors, especially Stored Tech. So, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by uh, Councilman Ferron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Switzer. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Here's unanimous. We're adjourned. Thank you. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian American food since 1922 and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.